Hello, first years. This is the third of six projects in the first academic year of your level three UAL creative media production course. I'm going to go through this together now. So we're going to look at the visual analysis and visual projects. Now, as I'm sure you've deduced, there are two parts to this project, the analysis and the projects. The analysis will cover unit four, which as you can see is all about critical and contextual awareness, understanding about how theory and critical approaches can help you become a better creative, understanding about how context, that is where and when something is created, can shape, mould and inform the sort of products that it is. The visual project will cover unit six. So this is you actually getting to investigate a particular visual medium, whether that be photography, animation, a game, video, documentary, it might be something in relation to infographics or film or music video, you decide. So two parts to this particular project. Let's have a look at the next page, which as you can see is the main part of the actual brief itself. So let's have a look, shall we? We're going to look at this in a bit more detail. So if I move this around here, We're going to look first of all at the overview here. So the overview states that you're going to create a visual analysis to show your knowledge of critical perspectives and contexts. So understanding theory and how that can be used to make us better creatives. And you're going to then apply that to your actual visual project itself. I'll break it down further. The visual analysis. So for the visual analysis, you're going to show an understanding of different critical perspectives, different theories relating to visual media. You're going to compare these different critical approaches and apply a range of different methods, a range of different theory to your range of different examples. Now, a range for me is about four as a minimum, I'd say four examples as a minimum of visual media examples you're going to look at and you're going to apply a range that is at least four different theoretical ideas to those at least four examples okay a range of visual media and a range of theory you're going to apply the theory to your examples that can be in any particular area you want it can be photography animation film tv wherever you want to look into hasn't necessarily got to be the same as what you make for your products either. It can be a wide ranging approach, up to you entirely. As long as you've got a range of examples and a range of different theory you're applying, we're good. You're going to explain how the knowledge you've shown in terms of the theory and the critical perspectives actually relates to your project. So how does that theory you've discussed relate to your actual projects? How would, is it useful? How is it of any relevance? How does it tie in? That's what I want to see, that connection between the theory and your work. After that, you need to compare the range of contexts within which your examples are situated and discuss how different contexts and contexts are where and when things take place how these different contexts and perspectives can change the perception of different work. So if something's made in the early 20th century, it's a different context if it's made in early 21st century Zambia. If something's made in a primarily suburban area in America, then that's a very different context when you compare it to something that was created, uh, I don't know, end of the Victorian era in France. These are different contexts, different times and places where things are made. I want you to compare how different contexts of the different examples that you've chosen change the sort of perspectives that people have on it. How does context change the way we see and encounter and read and interpret information? I want you to talk about context here. Now you'll see that I've put on the right hand side some further comments to push you a little bit further and to give you ideas as to what I'm looking for. 
At the end of your visual analysis, you're going to complete your work by showing an understanding of how different contexts can help you in your own development and rather an understanding of different contexts and what that actually means. When you're creating your work for an audience, the context it's going into, why is that important? Why is that of use to know? How would it help you? Knowing your audience, knowing the client, knowing the reception, why is that of any use to a media professional? Now this visual analysis piece of work can be done as an essay, if you prefer, by all means. Some of you would choose to do that, that's perfectly fine. But some of you equally will choose to do the visual analysis as a screencast, like I'm doing right now. Or it might be that you choose to do it as an essay. Or it might be that you choose to use something like Adobe Spark, which is a nice free tool, one-click Google login. You can create images, visuals, and text, like an article, like a web page almost, to show your understanding. So a screencast is a good way of doing it, capturing the screen while you talk over the top of it. An essay in the more traditional sense is absolutely fine as well. But Adobe Spark is a really useful tool as well. I recommend you having a play with or certainly to consider it. The analysis accounts for unit four. So it's really important that you can include these elements here that I've mentioned. We'll talk more about this in class, but just to summarize again, in your analysis, I'm looking for you to show an understanding of different critical perspectives, different theory we're going to be learning in class. And you're going to apply a range of these different theoretical approaches to a range of examples that you're going to select films tv shows photographs whatever it might be after that you're going to explain how your knowledge of theory applies to your actual project that you're planning to create thirdly you're going to compare a range of contexts where and when things are created and you're going to compare a range of contexts within which your range of examples are, are situated. So you're going to take your examples from the first part here, and you're going to use those same examples in this part here. So the same four, five examples. Tell me about their context. Where and when were they created and for whom? Does the context change the sort of product it is? Does the context change the way it's received? Does the context matter at all? Tell me about that. Discuss how different contexts and perspectives can change the perception of work. This is level three standard. This is in-depth, real, um, clear thinking that I'm fishing for, essentially. I want you to show this understanding. To end the visual analysis, complete your work by showing an understanding of contexts. And I'm going on about that quite a bit, but there's a reason going on about it for a bit, because that's how you get this grade. And tell me about how an understanding, understanding of different contexts can actually help you in your own development when you're creating work for a client or for an audience. How would it help you? Apply it to you. Apply it to your understanding. And in doing that, you have shown me that you have learned something. Let's look at the next section. Tell me how many minutes we are in. Eight minutes, 30. And we'll try and get through this in the next two minutes. The visual project is a bit more straightforward. You need to spend a bit more time looking at the visual analysis, to be honest with you. Because the visual project is something you're quite familiar with and used to doing right now. Essentially, you're gonna plan, produce, and evaluate a visual project. It could be anything you want. Now, it can be, as I've sort of suggested, a particular visual medium that you are comfortable with. So, it could be that you choose an animation or a film or a documentary or music video, whatever you want to do. At this point, of course, you'll have an idea of what you're interested in doing. First things first, though, analyze what is needed. What are the requirements and parameters of the project? What are the limitations? What are the tools, resources, and facilities you have available to you in the given time to create the visual project? Analyze this for Unit 6 1.1 criteria. After, carry out research activities Secondary and primary research, focus groups, surveys, interviews, looking at secondary research and analytics online to support your visual projects. Look into other 
examples of things similar in the same domain as what you're creating to show me you are learning and extracting information from that. Then plan, organize and present solutions for your visual projects. Different way of phrasing it this time, solutions, but the idea is the same. You're going to do pre-production, storyboarding, risk assessments, recce, scripts, planning. Templates are on docs.google.com, remember? Then you're going to make that thing. Apply your practical skills to actually executing the idea that you have set out here. At the end, evaluate it. How does it go? Be honest. Be brutally honest. And tell me what you can do next time to improve it. I want to know about this. The learning is the most important thing to me, not necessarily the actual end product itself in these first five projects of six. The sixth being the FMP, of course, at the end of the academic year. So that's it, my friends. That's it. So just over 10 minutes, this one. So it went on a little bit longer, but hopefully you understand why I went into more detail on the analysis work, because that is a bit different to what we've done before. But I'm here to help you. We've got time to do it as well. So let's recap. So we have until the 20th of December to create this particular set of evidence. Now the evidence is going to be for two units, unit four and unit six. So you're going to be creating a visual analysis. It could be an essay, a screencast, it could be a vlog, it could be an Adobe Spark. Any appropriate way of capturing the evidence is fine by me, but check with me first. And you're going to create a visual project as well. Two deliverables really. Hopefully I've broken this down in sufficient detail for you, but I'm happy to go over this in more detail with you as well. But comments underneath the YouTube video if you're unclear about anything. Use timestamps as well, that's really useful. So something like at 12 minutes, 3 seconds, I'm not sure what you meant by that, Scott. That would be really useful. Hello, you are right? Please come in. I'm recording a screencast video, but please, as you are. Um, you can timestamp your questions. That really helps me to pinpoint what you want answered. As always, this relates directly to the criteria. Now, you have until the 20th of December to create the evidence for both the visual analysis and the visual projects, okay? Deadline is, as always, at 4.30. And I want to see the link to your Google Sites or Weebly or Wix, whatever you're creating for housing your work to be submitted in Google Classroom at 4.30 on the 20th of December, just before Christmas, okay? Any questions, anything you're not sure about, please, in the comments on YouTube, and I'll be able to answer for you, okay? That is that. Thank you.